everybody, welcome back to the Working Man's Whiskey. I'm Bobby. Uh, feeling a whole lot better today, guys. Um, I I don't know who saw my uh, review on Thursday. I reviewed uh, Cuddy Sark, um, but I was a little under the weather, guys, and not feeling so hot. Uh, but happy to report that uh, two days later, you know, I made myself a couple of uh, hot toddies, and um, feeling pretty good today. Feeling a whole lot better. Uh, went back to work yesterday and uh, feeling pretty good. So I want to get a review on here. And uh, this one here today, guys, is uh, McCarthy's Oregon Single Malt. It's a pot distilled whiskey. Uh, and um, oh, I'll read you the label here. But uh, this has a very interesting story. It's not, not exactly a, an old whiskey um, as far as, uh, you know, hasn't been around a long, long time but the backstory is still pretty uh, incredible, pretty cool. So I'll read you the label here first. It says, uh, distilled by Clear Creek Distillery, Portland, Oregon, USA, from a fermented mash of 100% uh, peat malted Scottish barley, and barrel aged three years in Oregon oak, 42.5% uh, ABV, uh, which is 85 proof. Uh, standard 750 uh, milliliter bottle, batch number W16-02, Bottled September 23rd, 2016. And then I'm not sure. Here's the front of the bottle, guys. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but on the back, this is a pretty familiar uh, symbol uh, to beer drinkers out there. Uh, it's the Widmer Brothers. And uh, the Widmer Brothers uh, do a lot. Uh, they're, they're friends with uh, Steve McCarthy. And uh, when Steve first started this uh, distillery, he asked the Widmer brothers to um, make the wash for the uh, for the whiskey um, with the uh, imported um, peated barley, and uh, so they had a pretty good hand in uh, you know in the beginnings of this stuff. So pretty neat. Um, there is a bit of luck with uh, with this whiskey here, with this uh, distillery. Uh, story goes that uh, Steve McCarthy, as I said, the uh, the founder. So, uh, his family was in the farming uh, industry, not sure they still might be, but what happened was uh, Steve, back in, that, back in those days, you know, they had the farming, uh, uh, you know, they harvested uh, orchard fruit, um, they had pears and apples, things like that, and, uh, but Steve owned his own uh, hunting accessory business. He went to Europe um, on a business trip and uh, discovered how to um, how to distill, how to make um, how to make uh, alcohol out of uh, orchard fruit. So came back uh, from uh, from Europe and uh, fast forward a few years later, uh, in the nineteen eighties or so, uh, the family business was struggling a bit. Um, they were kind of fell in hard times. Um, weren't selling the uh, the product like they were before. So Steve said, hey, let's, let's just start turning this stuff into booze. So um, that's what they decided to do. And then, uh, and then he went to, um, he went to Ireland on a fishing trip. And while he was in Ireland, uh, the fishing was just going terribly. Um, he was having just, a terrible time out there so he went to one of the local uh, bars over there and uh, bars pubs um, whatever it was and uh, said he wanted to try out some uh, try out some whiskey in there and uh, while he was in there uh, he discovered that he loved um, peated scotch he loved that nice smoky peated scotch and uh, kind of put put everything together at that point guys he wanted to uh, uh, start, um, you know, making booze with his, uh, you know, different fruits in the orchard, and then uh, also make a, a single malted uh, kind of scotch, American scotch, if you will. So uh, that's what he did, and uh, shoot, couldn't have worked out any better, guys. So as you guys can see, my uh, my normal glass is uh, ah, it's dirty right now, so gonna use a different glass than usual if anybody was wondering all right uh, get a little pull
before. Uh, there's no uh, no shortage of wine glasses in this house, by the way. So um, my wife is uh, I'm I'm the whiskey man. My wife is more of the uh, um, kind of uh, I wouldn't say she's a wine hoe, but she she likes her wine. So anyway, um, go with a wine glass today. And as you can see, guys, uh, it's pretty light in color. This stuff, pretty darn light. Let's give it a give it a nose. And it's got a beautiful nose, guys. I mean, I love, I love uh, peaty whiskeys, um, smoky Scotch. Oh man, I mean, Islas are kind of the the Scotch that I prefer to this point. I do love uh, other regions as well. Um, I've talked about space size, of course, and all that. But uh, something about a nice. PD Scotch smells so good. And this one, the nose, I got to tell you guys, I think this is probably the best nose that I've ever gotten uh, on this kind of whiskey, you know, a Scotch whiskey, if you will, even though this is made here in the States, uh, just in Oregon. Uh, this, I mean, if you gave anybody a glass of this and told them to give them a nose, they think this was, you know, a straight I you know straight from uh, straight from Scotland guys so on the nose we get a good hit of that peat of course and a lot of people I've heard people say that this has like kind of a barbecue um, type smokiness to it and I get that definitely get that but what I'm getting more uh, specifically I guess is if uh, if you guys have you know tried different uh different techniques and uh materials while barbecuing um if you've ever had uh, if you guys have ever smelled those uh, mesquite wood chips they use for barbecuing um this that's what this smells like to me i get that uh that mesquite uh mesquite uh, wood chip uh type note to it and of course you get in the background um on a lesser note you get um i get honey I get vanilla, but a lot of good peat up front, a lot of that good um, mesquite wood uh, up front there. Uh, it's just a really nice, uh, nice nose. Let's give it a taste. <laughs> on the uh, on the palate, as you can probably imagine, this is just pure goodness, guys. This is nice and peaty. Um, it's one of those uh, campfire type whiskeys. You know, if you ever go camping or go out to the beach and you have a nice fire, this is this is the smell, um, the taste. So uh, really nice and smoky. That good mesquite. Um, woodiness to it, uh, good vanilla I get in there, um, definitely a little bit of honey. Let's give it another, another uh, taste here. Another thing I love, that finish, it's just so long. It doesn't go away very quickly. I mean, it's it's lasting and lasting. It's a very good, very good uh, um, single malt whiskey. I keep on wanting to call it a scotch. It's you know, it's made with Scottish barley, of course. Um, it's, a, it's an American scotch. It, it really is. Um, and I'll be honest with you guys, this, this may be my favorite, uh, you know, my favorite of whiskeys in that style. Um, it's just, it's so good. It's got so much going on. Um, it just, it's got such a, it's, it's got a great hit of peat. If you guys like peated whiskeys, you're going to love this. Uh, Clifton and uh, some of the others who have mentioned 
you know, Clifton, of course, recommended the uh, Teacher's Highland Cream because he, uh, he knew that I liked uh, peated whiskeys. And, uh, you know, if you guys like that, you're going to love this. Um, this one here, it's a little more expensive. Uh, this one here, it's, uh, it's right around 50 bucks. I wasn't sure what the availability was on this around, um, you know, other than Oregon. That's where my mom got it was in Oregon. But uh, I found it. Uh, at the Bottle Barn uh, recently, uh, last week, I went to go and just see what was going on over there, what they had, and I saw this sitting on the shelf, and I said, hey, you know, I, I was just wondering about that, like, you know, what states it, it had uh, reached, um, and I know that it's at least in California, but I imagine it'll start uh, making its way out other places. Uh, you guys might be able to, depending on where you are, you might be able to get your hands on a bottle of this or try it out somewhere. Definitely do. You're not going to be sorry. Um, this is very, very good whiskey. And, uh, I mean, I would definitely, you know, it's a little more expensive, as I said, about 50 bucks. Um, and I would definitely pay whiskeys like this, you know, this full body and uh, this good. Just, man, this, whiskeys like this that I've seen, that I've had, usually uh, go upwards of a hundred bucks, guys, and or more. Um, and this, this is just as good as any of the ones that I've had before. Um, very, very good stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of this. Big fan. So, uh, for a rating, I would have no problem rating this one, um, I'm getting some high scores here between the bull run, uh, barrel strength, and now this. I'm giving some uh, pretty high scores, guys. I'm going to give this one a 94, a 94 out of 100. Um, I think it's worth that. If you if you look anywhere, if you watch any other reviews, if you read any other reviews, um, it's got high marks everywhere, guys. Um, I watched a review with uh, um, uh, Daniel and Rex, if anybody watches uh, The Whiskey Vault. Uh, those guys are freaking hilarious. Uh, I enjoy their channel very much, and uh, and uh, they reviewed this and they loved it as well. So check that out. Um, and uh, that's about all I got for you on this one, guys. Um, do want to talk to you about something? Um, I would like to. And I've been talking to my buddy Adam about this from uh, the Whiskey Wasteland about possibly doing a live review um, one of these days. Maybe the next review, I don't know. Um, but not sure if I'll do it through, I think there's a way to do it through YouTube. But um, I know Adam was saying that, that he did his through, uh, through Facebook. Um, so I'm thinking about going that way too. Um, I just, I would love to do a live review and uh, talk to you guys while I'm, uh, while I'm doing a review. Um, and uh, I think it'd be fun, guys. So... Let me know what you think. Um, if you're not uh, subscribed or follow, following me on Facebook, please do. The Working Man's Whiskey on Facebook. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely talk soon, guys. If, uh, if I do that review, uh, I'll come on here and uh, give you a heads up. Uh, so maybe we won't do it for the next one. But if I decide to do the, uh, this live review, I'll mention it in the next uh video and tell you what I might do it. So, um, it'd be fun guys. I think that'd be a, a good time. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you have a great weekend and, uh, look forward to talking to y'all soon until next time. Cheers.